Good day, Scott. First of all, thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me over Skype. You and I have only known each other through a mutual acquaintance where you both worked at the Norfolk Naval Shipyard, and then we also were contributors to ASQ's Influential Voices, something that I participated in back in uh, 2010 through 2015. For our audience, would you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about where you grew up and where you went to college and what you studied? Thank you, Guy. Uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to talk with you. Um, I'm originally from Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, I graduated twice from the University of Delaware, first time with a bachelor's in accounting and a U.S. Army commission, and then the second time with a master's in operations research. Um, during my time, I spent about 12 years in the Army uh, in the maintenance field. Uh, one of my last assignments was with uh, the Rock Island Arsenal um, out in um, Illinois, along the Illinois-Iowa border. And one of the projects that uh, I got involved with was a, uh, an artificial intelligence expert system type of, type of project to uh, put a front end on a value engineering program that they had out there. So that was kind of my first interest in, in that. And again, it was an operations research position. So that followed on to my second time going into getting the master's in operations research. So you are involved heavily in what I would call the uh, TQM world, the total quality management world. Um, can you share with us a little bit about your career progression here from those experiences in the Army and how you got to where you are now? And tell us a little bit about where you are now. Sure. Uh, it, it, it really is by accident. Um, in, in that uh, operations research assignment in the Army, I got a a single class on uh, the Army's version of TQM at the time. This was in, oh, I guess about the late 80s. Didn't go very far, or they had PAT teams and all those other things, and we didn't necessarily go very far with that. Um, after leaving and getting my uh, degree, um, I was, if this was right after Desert Storm 1. I really struggled in trying to find a job. So my professors at the time pretty much told me, Scott, you need some sort of certification. And what helped, the certifications that would be best for me and my background was either uh, with uh, then called APIX, which was a uh, inventory, inventory management type of certification, production inventory management certification, or a quality certification. So since I knew family, Young, young daughter type of thing. I needed to get a job quickly. Uh, the ASQ certification was the better fit. So in October, roughly about 94, I got the certification. Within a couple months, uh, I had people knocking on my door getting a job. So I took the first job. That job was in the packaging industry in a, as a quality manager in a plant in Baltimore, Maryland. And then over the kind of next five years, I've kind of followed plant to plant, doing different things and, and the like. So at my last plant, which brought me uh, here to Virginia, Tidewater, Virginia, um, I had 30 people, three shift operation, doing inspection, inspection, that type of thing. And I kind of caught the teaching bug, teaching them the quality concepts. So... After, after my stint there in the plant, I said, okay, fine, let's see what I can do about teaching. So I um, got a position at Christopher Newport University here locally as a statistics instructor and data analysis uh, instructor. So I did that for a few years. And then um, based on some contacts and that type of thing in the ASQ world, I um, was able to sign on to... Um, the, the Navy's Lean Six Sigma College was based at Norfolk Naval Shipyard. So I spent about five years teaching there, went into the QA uh, organization there for a couple of years, uh, ended up in six years. I served as the calibration lab director um, at the local Cal Lab. And then a couple of years ago, I said, OK, I had enough of uh, being on the hot seat. Let me go back to teaching because that's what I really enjoy, teaching uh, uh, performance improvement and that type of thing. And that's what I'm doing right now is doing that. I'm, I'm really excited. It's getting get me back to the things that I like doing, 
especially traveling. And that's been the big thing about this position is I've been able to touch a lot of different people throughout the Navy, not just locally in the, uh, in the Tidewater area. Very cool. So you're, uh, what are you teaching? Well, I'm teaching the, uh, the Lean Six Sigma and Theory of Constraint Methodologies. Um, all the way from the, the base, um, base introductory types of things, just giving them a, just giving, uh, employees a taste of what it is. We call it a yellow belt type of thing to a first level facilitator course that we use as a green belt. And then more of a, uh, serious data analysis, um, the black belt type of, type of thing. So. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, next month I'm due to start uh, a black belt class out with the ship repair facility out in Yokosuka, Japan. So, and, and working with those folks out there. So, it, uh, that's kind of been been the nice thing about it is I've been able to touch a lot of different people. I've been up to DC and worked up with the uh, NASI headquarters and talking with them, getting those students energized, talking with them, serving as a mentor to a lot of them when they have some basic questions and how they get started and how they get, how they overcome some of the, the things that they, that they experience along the way. Very cool. So uh, that was a unique way to join the Navy and see the world. It sure was. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really tough when you get all these uh, uh, Navy officers in, in uniform saying, go Navy, beat Army. Well, I'm just like, uh. Yeah. Okay. So there's that tension. Yes. Can you share with us a little bit about your first exposure to uh, human performance technology or evidence-based practices for performance <laughs> improvement or however you guys refer to it in the TQM total quality management space? Uh, How do you well, talk about this? Well, yeah, it's interesting because quality has always been in that space. I, you know, quality has got a huge amount of things that ranges from the quality assurance, quality control, the the Durands and and uh, some and those types of things in in, in the um, in the in the working to standards uh, type of uh, type of work and obviously working in a uh, nuclear shipyard, there's a lot of lot of that uh, involved. But then again, I've all I've also experienced have been in the the measurement side, the the, the calibration side. Um, that's a, that's a unique thing that a lot of quality professionals don't necessarily get into that more as a service than necessarily providing that service. And then of course the, the natural on, onslaught is process improvement because the people on, the people on the workers as well as management is looking to the quality folks to improve or solve the problems that they need to do. So part of that is the experience in using different methodologies in trying to, to get there. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, there's no one methodology that's going to solve all the problems. You've got to, you got to kind of get, you got to kind of learn what all the methodologies are out there and then take what's, what's going to be comfortable and what you need to fit into that. So that's kind of where that, uh, where that, where that went into. Um, the nice thing about it is that has allowed me to kind of just skip and skip and skip and skip and get different different types of experiences. And then the challenge is also applying those experiences when new things come come along. So um, yeah, you're right. It's it's like what? Well, how do how do we uh, how do we describe all that? Um, and I don't know, it's almost like a Venn diagram where you know you got moons and certain well and, and the solar system type of thing too where you got moons circling around the earth and the sun and all those types of things you got different different solar systems going on we're all in a solar system and hopefully we've got the ability to be able to take a rocket somewhere and travel between solar systems to kind of get a, get a sense as to what's going on so who were some of your biggest influences in all of this uh, people or articles or books that so that as a way to point our audience to some sources understand and some of and some of the the obviously starting out in quality i did a lot of reading and, and I've, i touched on a lot of and of course the, the basics like deming like duran like phil crosby uh like peter schultz is a, is a, is a it, another one peter senge is one that it, that's uh had a big influence especially from a behavioral perspective. And then, of course, uh, from my Army days, Warren Bennis uh, and, and Peter Drucker with some of, some of that leadership and some of that management types of things. And another one, of course, it was easier reading since I do like to read is Ellie Goldratt 
and his books on theories of constraints and, and how he weaves a story into the concepts for the things to do. So there's a, there's a lot of people from the book's perspective. Um, someone that, that helped me with starting my quality journey, um, he, he used to work for DuPont, but now he's uh, working on his own, a gentleman by the name of Steve Bailey. Um, I've kind of touched base off and on over the past um, 20 some odd years that we've that we first started started um, he taught my first uh, certification review course that got my first certification for ASQ and then as I've gone into conferences and done different things and that type of thing I've had the opportunities to, to touch base with him along the way this is a gentleman who has, has had who was taught by George Fox at the uh, University of Wisconsin um, sharp, sharp man in regards to statistics, as well as understanding measurement systems and trying to quantify error. And just having those conversations and seeing how, how that works to me has really helped me from the, the technical side of things. Another gentleman who, as I started getting into the teaching and trying to understand my style in regards to teaching and also building curriculum with all that is a colleague by the name of Bart Willoughby. Um, one of the one of the projects that uh, he, he and I, that he and I were working on was updating the the black belt curriculum for the Lean Six Sigma College, and he really gave me an appreciation about what the difference between a SME is and a learning facilitator, and how it is very difficult for a SME to adequately write curriculum that's going to be helpful for um, for the neophyte student. Learn just first time learning the, the, the concept. So that was a, an interesting project that, that uh, he and I have had a lot of good uh, back and forth on, uh, to say the least. Yes. I know Art and I have had the pleasure of working with him before, and that is the colleague that uh, kind of uh, introduced me to you, uh, even though this is the first time I've actually seen you live is uh, now that we're doing this video. We talked about this, uh, and you uh, got a heads up on this, so uh, just as a fair uh, warning to everybody else, but if you were to give us a 30-second elevator speech on what you do, say you're at a, a neighborhood party and somebody says, Scott, what do you do? What, what do you say? So I say I'm an instructor, a mentor, a subject matter expert in lean methodologies, Six Sigma methodologies, theory constraint methodologies. Um, I work for the U.S. Navy. I have students. Uh, um, I have backpack will travel, and it's kind of my job to go to them to help them improve their processes or facilitate improvement along the way. Um, it get, you know, again, the Navy has given me a huge opportunity in being able to, to do this, and then also taking some of that and sharing that uh, with ASQ. So. The nice thing about, about my journey is it's been one of those things to where I've seen um, a few uh, you know a few different areas that I would never have seen before. Although the the, uh, the army took me to uh, to South Korea um, as part of um, my requirements, I would never have gotten to see Dubai or Newport, Rhode Island, or spent a lot of time out in San Diego without the Lean Six Sigma College and doing the things that I've been, I've been doing. So, um, have backpack, will travel. Um, <laughs> I'm not shy on giving me, giving you my ideas on how we can solve your problem. Thank you. Thank you for that. Can you share with us, uh, any current focused or your next focus for your own personal learning as a lifelong learner? Are you working on anything or writing anything now that you could share with us? Boy, that is just such, such a great question. Um, one little th something that really um, kind of gets my cross, I wouldn't say gets my cross so much as more like it's in the back of my head and always want to do something is that given the current advances in technology, it surprises me that a lot of people do not understand how modeling and simulation can help improve processes. Um, and then and the beauty behind it is just about everyone has some some software that will be able to help them using uh, to do modeling and simulation. Microsoft Excel um, ha, is a perfect tool with all that. 
And my challenge is with a little learning and, of course, the spreadsheet, someone can, cr can, can create a process simulation in, in a matter of an hour or so. So my challenge is kind of the, car the, the, the carve out time, not only to create something that can help my colleagues in the Navy, but also to share it to the, the process improvement world, the performance improvement world, so that um, we're able to do something. Um, it's like anything else. We're always, we're always busy with current work challenges and, and all the other things that uh, take up the day to day. Um, it, that that project may turn into my uh, my first retirement project once I uh, once I leave the Navy. So who knows? <laughs> well, thank you. My next question is about uh, language or terminology. Uh, I ask: Is there a favorite, or perhaps it's perhaps it's not really a favorite, but it, a phrase or a term from the world of performance improvement or total quality management? that you would like to define for us because perhaps other people are not using it correctly in your view and you want to put your own spin on it. Do you have something for us? I don't know if it's, it's a, if it's using it incorrectly or not being cognizant of, uh, of what it is, especially once you get to a point to where you become a subject matter expert. Um, and again, I'm going to uh, harken back to Art Willoughby and that is logic leaps. Um, Someone who has had a lot of experience in a technique, a methodology, or that type of thing will do will jump ahead a lot and will naturally make a, a big leap into another aspect of things, or their subject matter experts are very, very good at uh, putting two disparate objects together and seeing the linkages behind all that. When you take that same type of logic and, ha and try to explain it to a neophyte. It's really, really difficult in establishing a discipline in trying to break it down into bite-sized chunks so that you don't create that logic leap. A lot of the problems that I have faced is communication. So communicating at, at a level in trying and, ha and, and having people understand the core concept that you're trying to get to and then teach them how to guide through all that really comes into deconstructing those logic leaps and try and then putting them back together in that small bite-sized chunks so that the, the person can understand and then take it from there. Thank you. Let's uh, shift gears a little bit here and go back and explore a little bit more about some of the people who have influenced you uh, regarding your own practices and uh, the projects that you've been involved in. We talked about this uh, before starting, and uh, you mentioned two people, uh, Ray Svensson, the late Ray Svensson, who was my business partner for 15 mm -hmm. years uh, after our business uh, broke up. Uh, quite a number of years after that, in fact, you had an opportunity to work with him on a project for ASQ. What, what do you have to share with us about uh, Ray? One um, guy, thank you for obviously introducing us, <laughs> introducing <laughs> us, because that was a big help. Um, I, I was on a team um, that was built to kind of put a structure together behind creating a learning management system for ASQ, their first learning management system. And the team that was put together was, was made up of volunteer ASQ volunteers. Uh, we had very little uh, knowledge of, we were all very good at the, at the delivery of instruction, but not, not very good at its structure or how to put it together, especially something from scratch. So Ray, really helped us give us a form and some thoughts behind how we would go about doing it. We only met with Ray a couple times, but the, the ground that he laid allowed us to create something that to me was very, very valuable. Allowed us to be able to, to apply technology to be able to improve the offerings that we have. Ultimately, that project became uh, the ASQ Learning Institute. Um, it was, it's really the version one of what ASQ is doing for um, their, their learning management system nowadays. And it, 
it, it allowed ASQ to bring on board some curriculum uh, experts to to build to put the ideas into into fruition. So that's where, to me, having that ability to be able to see something entirely different, looking at that structure in a different way, was really helpful, and it's been helpful for me down the road on trying to take a look at what I have in regards to current curriculum and give me an appreciation as to, well, what's, what's the end point do we want to achieve and how do we get there? So um, that, was, that was a great experience for me. Super, thank you. The second person, you've already talked a little bit about him, was Steve Bailey. Um, what else might you add in terms of, uh, you know, more sp- more about what he gave you, what he did for you as a uh, uh, mentor or guide. So Steve was, Steve is one of those, one of those gentlemen that um, I have a phrase. um, You, you you know, I I like to steal my steal. (laughs) I steal ideal ideas. uh, I, I steal ideas, but I share shamelessly type of thing. And, and, he is he is a source to where when we're talking about the technical side of understanding error, errors and, and that type of thing, he has been very very good on some technical on some statistical techniques, specifically measurement systems analysis and design of experiments. He's been the guy that's really helped me through his his writings and through the presentations that he's given on helping me better understand and at the same time start to take a look at how do I apply those basic concepts to a different world? Because unfortunately, we're, you know, the, the, the topics that we're teaching in regards to the Six Sigma process was built for a world that was in the 1980s, 1990s. Not a lot of technology, didn't have any data, didn't have data storage, data mining, didn't have all those the, the big data and that type of thing. And as well as we streamlined uh, measurement systems to where it's one source type of thing. So the question still comes down to we still have the requirement to make sure that if we're going to measure something, it's done correctly and we have to validate it. How do you go about validating it? What are some ideas behind all that? That's kind of a second retirement uh, type of approach that I want to I explore a little bit more in, in kind of opening up that aperture to be able to say, we have, you have the IT industry, you've got a lot of folks, you've got uh, data scientists out there and all that good thing. Yes, we've got software software uh, quality and <clears throat> testing and the like, but it still comes down to measurement and how do you make sure that what you're measuring is exactly what it is that, you, that you're doing. So that's kind of where, what Steve has helped me with, with, the, with the ground level technical skills and then taking those technical skills and applying them in a different way. Thank you. Scott, again, thanks so much for participating with me in this video interview. My final question is, do you have any parting words of wisdom or guidance for our audience, especially those who are new to the field of performance improvement, uh, whether they're young people, middle-aged or older, what guidance can you provide them? Uh, Well, looking back, Looking back to where I first started, um, I was thrown into the deep end of the pool in regards to quality. Uh, yes, I had the basic knowledge that a certification offers, but none of the practical experience to do all that. And I will tell you that I, I made my share of mistakes. And the my journey has been one of those uh, knowledge exploration types of dirty, uh, journeys to where I go to here to here to here to kind of understand, well, why did this fail and what are the things that we have to do? And it's kind of led me to where um, I want to say, kind of to, to, to phrase to where it's a riff on a lot of statements. But really what I found is that the only true failure is the one never attempted. Failure to me is, is just another, another word for a learning opportunity. And it also is an opportunity to, to do something differently. And, and really our challenge is, is being able to get leaders to appreciate the power uh, of performance improvement, the willingness to create the time to be able to execute that, 
And really, and, you know, as Gary Rumler used to say, create the white space to implement performance improvement appropriately. So that's the, where I see our, our big challenge is. And that's not only do we need to be technical experts in all this, but be the salesperson for the successes that we do have and also promote the, uh, the people below us and saying, yeah, you, it may be hard right now, but your, your, the problems are going to change and there still, there still is no right answer for everything that we've got out there. So that's what I can impart. Um, I've had a great journey. Um, I know that at least once in my, in my master's program, I said, I was never going to go into the, go into the quality profession, but never say never, I guess. <laughs> Scott Rutherford, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and insights with us today. Have a great day. Thank you guys. It's been a great pleasure.